You were speaking to this or this? Or both? Yeah. Uh, it's a pleasure to be, to be here this afternoon and I'm uh, really um, in thrill uh, to have listened to such marvelous presentations in the last two days on uh, this very important subject that we're going to discuss today in a different context. Um, oceans, uh, subject of ocean, uh, is really central to all that we do for development in the world. So I would, um, we have been listening to specifically focused presentation on various aspects of the work that all of us do on oceans, but I'll try to broaden the, the horizon and give you an overview of how the world uh, now sees this issue, uh, the challenges that are there, that are there and the opportunities uh, that are in hand. Um, but first of all, um, again, thanks to the organizers here for giving me this opportunity to, uh, to come and uh, learn from such a uh, distinguished uh, distant speaker and all that. Um, the Sustainable Development Goals, as we call them, were adopted exactly three years ago uh, in New York, uh, where the international community came together in a summit meeting, uh, and they adopted this very comprehensive uh, agenda, which is called the 2030 Agenda. But before we go to 2030 Agenda, why did we need this? Uh, why was the world ready to go a step forward as it did and adopt this agenda? We knew. There were the Millennium Development Goals, which were uh, adopted uh, in the year 2000, and uh, that were mainly focused as a donor-driven agenda for the eradication of poverty and um, the related aspects of sanitation, education, child mortality, uh, and the rest. Um, the, the progress in uh, achieving MDGs was sporadic, and here and there it was, uh, although there was uh, quite considerable areas, quite considerable problems in some areas. But overall, uh, the, uh, the, the, the result part was not very uh, encouraging. So the world thought that perhaps we have worked uh, in silos, we have worked uh, in different tracks, and now the need is to integrate everything that we do uh, separately in, in, in all over the world, in regions, in countries, in sectors, in industries, and to bring them under one framework and this framework, as we know, is called the 2030 Agenda, and then the accompanying uh, 17 uh, Sustainable Development Goals, which address all the areas, as you can see in the slide here, from poverty and education, which is the first one, which is the central one, and to the rest of it, which is hunger, food, uh, and, and, and you can see the list, the full list there. Um, this is primarily because uh, even today, despite all these problems we have, we have about 800 million people still living in extreme poverty. And this is a challenge that we have to face. The children from the uh, poorest 20% of the household today are more than twice as likely to sustain, to be stunned, as those from the wealthiest 20 percent And in the context of uh, global uh, emissions of carbon dioxide, uh, there has been 50% increase in these emissions since 1990. Water scarcity has affected 40% of people in the world, and this is projected to increase in the years to come. The world population is growing, and with this growth, the challenges that we have just listed in the SDGs, if you've just seen it, are going to be increasing also. By 2100, as we see here in the slide, we will be 11 billion. So the central issue, as we always say in the sustainable development context, is the eradication of poverty. Because poverty affects the progress in all other areas that we do. And it was this, in this context, that the world thought that action is required and a shift of approach was needed, and that was the main encouraging encouragement for, for the world to come together and adopt this agenda. At the same time, the world also realized that while we need to move forward, 
we need to do it together. The MDGs, as I said, was sporadic and, and, and the progress was uneven, <coughs> the achievement was uneven. So how to develop a new paradigm? And that new paradigm for, for sustainable development, as we call it now, not development, was shaped in this uh, 2030 agenda, which is universal and which integrates the entire subjects, all the issues. Uh, this is a historic breakthrough, no doubt, because uh, and it, 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 it has not just come uh, out of blue, it has a legacy which spans to a couple of decades when uh, the progress, uh, when, 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 when UNEP was first established in 1974 and then the Rio summit was held, uh, the Earth Summit in 1992 in Brazil, and then the Rio Plus 20 summit, and then all the action that has been taken place in the climate change agenda. So this agenda provides a comprehensive multilateral framework and a plan of action, uh, and it also aims to address the issues that uh, are listed in the uh, SDGs. And this is a transformative agenda, no doubt. Uh, before I go to uh, specific uh, two goals that I'm trying to focus on, SDG 6 on water and SDG um, on, on oceans, uh, let me tell you that one of the revolutionary features of uh, of, of 2030 agenda is the fact that governments and international community recognized that this challenge cannot be met alone. Governments alone will not be able to do it. And uh, during the last two days here, this point has been repeated uh, quite a few times, that without the help of private sector, without the help of scientific community, without the help of academia, civil society, and all other stakeholders, uh, no matter how much, uh, how strict, how strong an effort the governments make, they won't be able to achieve this. And so the, 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 the focus of the, the, the emphasis is on partnership, global multi-stakeholder partnership. In fact, when this agenda was adopted, it was defined at that time by five Ps. Peace. Peace, planet, people, prosperity, uh, this was the, the, the sort of the defining context in which, uh, and planet, sorry. Uh, this was the defining context for this, uh, for this agenda, and it, it remains like this. The United Nations, the role of the United Nations will remain central, uh, because, um, as I said, it's a multi, multi-stakeholder, multilateral process, and uh, all the countries committed to it, uh, to work together. Because, like climate, uh, all these other issues, they know no boundaries whether it's ocean, whether it's water, air quality, or global warming. So unless and until we uh, work together, we won't be able to, to do this. And by design, uh, the, the, the goals and the targets, uh, 169 targets that are accompanying these goals, are, are designed in such a way that um, each country and each sector and each uh, uh, section of the society will have to join hands to to have some hope for, for achieving this. On water, goal six. Today, uh, 2.1 billion people are still lack access to safely managed drinking water. And 4.5 billion people lack safely managed situation, sanitation services. As the population grows, this challenge again will uh, be growing in, in all dimensions. So pollution, infrastructure development, and resource extraction, they are uh, one of the challenges that we face uh, in this sector. And just note one thing, 80% of wastewater for human activities is discharged untreated into our waterways. And this is in addition to the waste that we throw into oceans to which I'll come a bit later. So SDG 6, aims at achieving universal and equitable um, access to safe and affordable drinking water. The implementation of SDGs uh, as uh, with other uh, is at the heart of the integrated approach of 2030 agenda. As an example, 
I can tell you the integrated resource management of water resources, and the, uh, which promotes the coordinated development and management of water, land, and related resources to maximize economic and social welfare in an equitable manner without compromising the sustainability of water ecosystems. In 2015, 29% of the global population lacked safely managed drinking water supplies and 61% were without safely managed sanitation services. Water scarcity, flooding, lack of proper wastewater management also hinder social and economic development. So, today as we see, more than 2 billion people globally are living in countries with excess water stress. In 22 countries, mostly in Asia and Africa, the water stress level is about 70%. This indicates the strong probability of future water scarcity. So therefore, the implementation uh, of integrated water resource management will be uh, crucial, but we are still running behind. Uh, the recent reports, as we see from some of the assessments in the United Nations, we are still far behind in achieving this target. In 2017 and 18, for example, the average implementation of this approach, integrated water resource management, was only 48% in uh, 157 countries. Without uh, belaboring this point too much, just me, let me just sum up this part by saying that uh, achieving SDG 6 will be essential for making progress in all other, in all other areas as well. SDG 14 relates to oceans. And oceans cover 71% of our planet. We rely on oceans for food, for water, for our planet, as a sink for carbon dioxide, for our air. Nearly half, uh, half of the world population depend directly on the sea for their livelihood. That's why SDG 14 focuses on life below water and aims at conserving and sustainably using the oceans. Last month, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and you might have uh, heard about that report, again rung bells, strong bells, strong alarm bells, about the urgent need for drastic environmental action to keep the global warming from exceeding 1.5 degrees Celsius above the previous level. An increase to 2 degrees would mean more heat waves for tens of millions of people, especially in vulnerable countries poor countries, far greater species loss, which had an impact on biodiversity and food security, increased water scarcity in some of the world's most unstable regions, and a total wipeout of the world's coral reefs, a loss of more than 3 million tons in global annual catch of marine fisheries, instead of 1.5 million if the increase was to uh, temperature was 1.5 uh, degrees Celsius. Climate change uh, is an existential threat to us, and it manifests its different uh, dangers to us in all aspects of our everyday life as well. Nowhere our environmental certainties and uncertainties are more than dramatic than in the oceans, which covers three-fourths of the Earth, surface contains 97% of the earth water and provide more than 50% of oxygen we breathe. Reduction in marine pollution is also critical for the conservation and sustainability of our oceans, seas, marine resources, and it also negatively affects the health of marine life and fish stock. And we heard some good presentations here on this subject, so I won't uh, go into the detail, but just to say that the effects of fishery subsidies can be a positive or at the same time a negative uh, impact, depending on the intended effect and on the design of this subsidy uh, that is given to this sector. 
But serious efforts are needed to achieve the goal and target of SDG. Destructive fishing practices, over fishing, and illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing are increasing pressure on marine ecosystems. The global share of marine fish stocks that are within biologically sustainable level declined from 90% in 1974 to 69% in 2013. Global trends point to continued deterioration of coastal waters owing to pollution and excessive amounts of nutrients in water, which results in lack of oxygen creating dead zones. One quarter of all carbon dioxide released through human activity is absorbed by the ocean. An emerging and urgent challenge is now putting our oceans at risk, and that is the menace of plastic. Scientists estimate that we throw away uh, about from 8 million tons to 13 million tons of plastic to our oceans every year. Plastic accounts for 90% of all ocean trash, with 46,000 pieces of plastic covering every square mile. This is um, alarming. So, mindful of the challenge and the need for urgent action, last year, in 2017, the UN Environment Program launched the Clean Seas Campaign, which aims at engaging governments, the public, the private sector, and industry in the fight against marine plastic pollution. Over the last two years, UN Environment has engaged with governments, citizens, businesses to promote concrete action to address the root cause of marine litter by targeting the production and consumption of non-recoverable, especially single-use plastic. More than 54 countries today, up to today, have announced specific action plans to regulate the use of single-use plastics. By connecting individuals, civil society, groups, industry, and governments. The Helix uh, example that was quoted here. UN Environment is trying to be a catalyst for change, transforming habits, practices, standards, and policies around the globe to dramatically reduce marine litter and the harm it causes to us. This campaign contributes to the goal of Global Partnership on Marine Litter, which is a voluntary, open-ended partnership for international agencies, governments, businesses, academia, local authorities, and non-governmental organizations hosted by our organization. And I would invite uh, you to become a member of this partnership and join it for a vibrant community, join the vibrant community of environmental leaders and share your experience. Um, a bit more on this as an example of uh, this issue of marine litter. 80% of marine pollution litter come from land-based sources because a large share of population and productive activities are located in coastal areas or close to the river catchment areas and these activities release waste and pollutants into water that discharge into stream and coastal zone, goes into the uh, stomachs of fish that we eat and ends up in our dinner plates. So reduction of marine pollution will therefore be achieved only if we take action at source uh, to changing the lifestyle, the sustainable consumption and production patterns, which is another SDG 12, uh, and also urbanization, uh, SDG 6, uh, with the right infrastructure, including better waste management and sustainable agriculture as well. The interaction between SDG 14 and other goals is so central. Uh, just I mentioned three goals, but if you see the rest of the agenda also, uh, everywhere, whether that is uh, health issues, or whether that is urbanization, or uh, agricultural food security, even livelihood of local communities, uh, uh, they all relate in one way or another, are linked uh, intrinsically to SEZ uh, 14. So this interaction of uh, SDG 14 with other can also be in reverse. For example, if we look at the links between SDG 14 and SDG 7 on energy, clean energy is one component of the economy 
which can help small, small oil and development states and least developed countries to reduce the dependence on fossil fuel. And this morning I was at one of the uh, groups which were discussing the uh, renewable energy and solar energy uh, as, as one option for uh, new economy. However, the infrastructure needed such as wind farms in shallow areas will increase pressure on coastal marine systems with negative local impact on many of the ecosystem, um, for example, resilience. So this underlined, once again, the importance of the integrated approach, which is uh, pivotal uh, in this discussion. The role of private sector uh, cannot be highlighted more, um, as we have heard here from uh, some of the companies and as we see in the exhibition just across uh, this hall, uh, that the recognition uh, has been granted in uh, SDG, uh, SDGs and the 2030 agenda that without the engagement of all stakeholders, uh, government alone will not uh, be able to do it. So in this it's not all gloom, uh, gloomy scenario. Uh, businesses, including those involved in the production of food, energy, chemicals, um, materials and medicines, all have a significant role to play in achieving uh, not only SDG 6 and 14, but also uh, in collaboration with others.